Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, uh, I want to express uh, how grateful and happy um, I am today to be with all of you to, to share and to hear about Srila Prabhupada. Uh, first, I wanted to ask, uh, um, do we have a lot of uh, Russian uh, ladies? Any, everybody is speaking in English? Yes? No? Maybe someone can uh, translate for the one who don't speak English. Yeah. Uh, you can, you, and also uh, Mataji. So. <coughs> oh, Madgana Timilan Dasya, Gyanam Shanam Sarakaya, Shaksun Milita Miena. I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master, Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who has opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge, for I was in the darkness of ignorance. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Prachalini Nilvise Sashunyavadi Pashatyade Shatarini Jayushri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shiva Sadigod Bhaktavrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Van Shakarpa Talubiasha Kripa Sindhu Bia Evacha Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Shira Pautad Ki Chai So uh, I was told, uh, dear devotees, that we are going to read from Srila Prabhupada Lamrita. And uh, actually, we are starting a chapter one, Srila Prabhupada's childhood. And uh, so I want to offer uh, my uh, respectful obeisances to the author of that beautiful Srila Prabhupada Lamrita, Sansarup Maharaj. Actually, he did such a great service because uh, a lot of us in the audience, we didn't meet Srila Prabhupada in this lifetime. But by reading Srila Prabhupada Lila Mrita, it will be like you are meeting Srila Prabhupada. You, we will start from his childhood and uh, all his life and teaching until his last breath. So it's going to be an extraordinary meeting and uh, you will know Srila Prabhupada. Uh, it's like uh, when we saw uh, the movie of Yadu Bara and Vishaka Prabhu. Uh, everybody was so moved. Everybody said it's like a second coming of Srila Prabhupada. So Lila Mrita will be like that. So um, we, we have about three quarters of an hour. Uh, I was going to, to read a little bit about the childhood and share, and after share with you um, the qualities that uh, I appreciate uh, maybe the most. It's difficult to choose which qualities uh, we appreciate the most in Srila Prabhupada and tell some pastimes about these qualities. If you, if you ask uh, Srila Prabhupada disciples, uh, what, which quality did you like the best? Uh, a lot of us will tell you, Srila Prabhupada, infinite compassion. You know, it's a causeless mercy, it's compassion. So the little pastime will be about Srila Prabhupada's compassion. 
And I wanted to ask in the room if there are any other Srila Prabhupada disciples uh, here. Yeah? No, not now. Okay. So let's, uh, let's start uh, reading about Srila Prabhupada's childhood. So the author is taking us back two centuries, two centuries ago when India was not independent yet. India was under the rule of the British Empire, uh, under the rule of Queen Victoria. And uh, at that time, there was a saying in the world that uh, the sun never set uh, on, the, on the British Empire. So Prabhupada took birth at that time. Uh, there is actually uh, something Srila Prabhupada said and wrote. Uh, he's talking about his childhood, about his father, Gaur Morandi, who was a pure devotee. He said, we would be sleeping and father we'd, we'd, would be doing Arctic. Ding, ding, ding we would hear the bell and wake up and see him bowing down before Krishna. So these are the first memories of Srila Prabhupada. So uh, we, we are going back in time and uh, we are going to, to go to the beautiful celebration of Janmashtami. It was Janmashtami the annual celebration of the advent of Lord Krishna some 5,000 years before. Residents of Calcutta, mostly Bengali and other Indians, but also many Muslims and even some British were observing the festive day, moving here and there through the city streets to visit the temples of Lord Krishna. Devote Vaishnava fasting until midnight, chanting Hare Krishna, and heard about the birth and activities of Lord Krishna from Srimad Bhagavatam. They continued fasting, chanting, and worshipping throughout the night. So we can see that at that time, everybody in India was united. Even uh, people from the Muslim community would come and celebrate Janmashtami. Uh, it was before the partition. The partition divided not only the Holy Land of India, but also people, unfortunately. Because uh, at the time it was, not, it, it was known that the British they, they were actually dividing people to rule. So the next day, September 1st, 1896, in a little house in the Toliganga suburb of, of Calcutta, a male child was born. Since he was born on Nando Sadva, the day Krishna's father, Nanda Maharaj, had observed a festival in honor of Krishna's birth, the boy's uncle called him, who knows, hmm? Nandulal, Nandulal. But his father, Gaur Morandi, and his mother, Rag, Rajini, named him Abhai Charan, one who is fearless, even taken shelter at Lord Krishna's Lord's feet. Actually, Srila Prabhupada, all his life, uh, was the, perfect, the personification of his name, Abhai Charan. Uh, I remember uh, when um, uh, a few, maybe not even two years after I joined Krishna Consciousness uh, in London, uh, it was in 71, uh, in the temple, we heard a very, very amazing news that Srila Prabhupada was at the moment in the Soviet Union. And uh, the Soviet Union, for us Westerners, was such a terrible place. 
It was behind what we called the Iron Curtain. And if anybody was opposed to the communist regime, he will disappear from the surface of the earth. He will go to camp, to labor camp, or he will go to, to prison. Even a great personality uh, that the government didn't uh, accept anymore, they were taken away from the history books. Their, their pictures were taken away from the history books the children were studying in school. So when I heard Sheila Popad was in the Soviet Union, I remember thinking, oh, Sheila Popad is so brave, he's really fearless. And uh, I remember feeling very, very proud of Sheila Popad. You know? <laughs> because at the time it was very dangerous. The KGB was actually forbidding any religious books. Uh, people were taking to camps if they were printing the Bible even. But Prabhupada was, was going to that uh, uh, Soviet Union, which was actually the kingdom of atheism. At that time in uh, Moscow, there was even a, a university of atheism. You know, maybe the only country in the world to have a faculty, a university of atheism. So we know when we are chanting Srila Prabhupada's second uh, mantra, prana mantra, that Srila Prabhupada came following in uh, the footstep, footsteps of his beloved spiritual master. He came to eradicate voidism and impersonalism. And surely atheism is in the same category. So Srila Prabhupada was very, very uh, uh, <coughs> determined to go uh, to the Soviet Union, to just to spread love of God. And um, Shema Sundar Prabhu, who actually was with, with Srila Prabhupada, <coughs> was talking about these five days as the five days that <coughs> change the world. Uh, when, when Prabhupada was there, uh, he met uh, one professor called Professor Katowski. And uh, they talk about Vanashram Dharma, how uh, any society, even uh, the society in the Soviet Union, cannot be a classless society. Because by birth, uh, everybody will have some tendency to, to have occupations in life. You know, the, the four different uh, occupations, the Brahmana, the Kshatriya, uh, the Shudra, the Vaisha. So Professor Kanovsky agreed. And then uh, Srila Prabhupada asked, can I see the students? And uh, Professor Katowski said, oh, today, no students. Prabhupada was disappointed. Can I see the teachers? No teachers today. Because uh, Professor Katowski was so frightened of the KGB. He chose a day where nobody will be in the Institute of Indology. So, Prabhupada was feeling very, very disappointed. But by Krishna's arrangement, uh, the rest is history. A few days later, Shemasunda went to the grocery store to buy whatever could be bought at the time, not much, maybe milk, potatoes, cabbage, carrots. And a young man approached him. And uh, seeing that uh, Shema Sundar was, was dressed in dhoti uh, and uh, shika, tilak, he said, uh, oh, you are coming from India? And Shema Sundar said, no, I'm not coming from India. Then uh, the, the boy's name was Anatoly. Anatoly asked, do you, do you have any jeans to sell? You know, because... Uh, the, the youth was striving from anything coming from the West. 
And uh, Shamasuda had dotis, so he said, no, no, I don't have any, any genes. And then Anatoly asked, uh, do you have any records from the Beatles? Then Shamasuda became very ecstatic. He said, no, I, I don't have any records from the Beatles, but my spiritual master uh, is here. He's actually the spiritual master of the Beatles. Would you like to see him? And uh, Anatoly and his young friend, Indian friend Madhukar, said, yes, we would like to see him. And then they met Sri Prabhupada. And Prabhupada gave so much to that uh, boy just in two days. Uh, Shamasuda never saw Sri Prabhupada giving so much to one single devotee. He taught him everything about Krishna consciousness. And when, uh, when the boy asked him, uh, I would like to spread Krishna consciousness, should I become a pope? You know, pope, an uh, uh, orthodox priest. They are in black, long hair, long beard. So Prabhupada laughed and said, no, it's not necessary. So Prabhupada at that time, uh, he could see the future in that situation. A devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, do you know everything? And Srila Prabhupada said, no, I just know what Krishna wants me to know. Uh, then uh, he, he was passing near uh, the uh, mausoleum of Lenin, uh, you know, Lenin, the, the founder of uh, Marxi Marxism after Marx, he put in practice in the country communism. And Prabhupada said that communist regime won't last more than 20 years. At the time, nobody could believe that because Russia was so strong politically. That was the Cold War with America and the Western world. And uh, then exactly 20 years later, uh, communism started to break down. And what we called uh, in uh, Russia, perestroika, meaning change, started to appear. So I, uh, this to say that Prabhupada was fearless. Because when, when we celebrated in Moscow the 40th anniversary of Srila Prabhupada coming to Moscow, one devotee, a veteran devotee, came on stage to tell us the, his following story in a very, very humble way. These devotees from the beginning, they were real heroes. They, they, some of them gave up their lives. Uh, others gave, that, gave up their freedom, their mental health, just to spread love of God, Krishna consciousness. So that devotee, he was a cook for Krishna. And he came on stage and he told us, at the time, I was a KGB officer. And one day, my hierarchy came to me. And they told me, uh, we have a new mission for you. You see, uh, here, uh, there is a book. So we give you this book, and you have to study the books very, very carefully. You can take all the time you need. Uh, because uh, we have to know uh, the philosophy of our opponents to defeat them. So you know which book it was? Which book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bhagavad Gita, as it is. So um, the, the KGB uh, man, he took Bhagavad Gita and he started to study it really well. But very soon he got a big, big problem. He loved it. You know, he, he couldn't find anything wrong with it. So uh, he got also a list of devotees to be arrested. And uh, he, one day he knocked on one door. Uh, the lady devotee opened and she got very, very frightened. Then he told her, do not worry, 
I have some questions about Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> and uh, then he told, he told uh, you and your friends, please, you should uh, change flat very, very soon because you are going to be uh, arrested by, uh, by the KGB. So uh, the, his uh, hierarchy came back and told him what's happening. You're really taking a long time to read this book. And he told them, you know, I love uh, my country. I love Lenin. I love Marx. I love Stalin. But I have a big problem. I have obeyed your order. But I don't uh, find anything wrong in this Bhagavad Gita. So they, they discussed and they, they understood. Uh, he just obeyed orders. So they didn't punish him, but he had to leave the KGB. So just, just for these books, it was very, very dangerous to, to come to Russia. And uh, when we heard Srila Prabhupada was there, you know, we felt uh, so proud that he was really uh, fearless. So let's go back a little, maybe one or two paragraphs on the childhood of a uh, beautiful childhood of Srila Prabhupada. And after, we will talk about Srila Prabhupada's compassion. Is it okay? Okay. So we were, yeah. In accordance to Bengali tradition, the mother had gone to the home of her parents for the delivery. And so it was, it was that on the bank of the Adiganga, a few miles from his father's home, in a small uh, two-room mud-walled house with a tiled roof, underneath a chuck fruit tree that Abai Sharon was born. A few days later, Abai returned with his parents to their homes. At 100, 151 Harrison Road, an astrologer did an horoscope for the child, and the family was made jubilant by the auspicious reading the astrologer made a specific prediction. When the child reached the age of 70, he will cross the ocean, become a great exponent of religion, and open 108 temples. So they were very jubilant because um, Prabhupada's father, Gormohandi, was a pure devotee. And from the very beginning, he wanted to train Abai to become a pure devotee, a pure Vaishnav. We will read later when Abai was in age to go to school. Uh, his father asked a Mridanga teacher to come and teach Abai. So Prabhupada told us, um, some days he was just going on the porch of the house, listening to the rain dropping. And listening to the rain, he was practicing the Mridanga. His father, his father just was praying every sadhu who would come to the house that, please bless my son, so he will become a pure servant of Srimati Radharani. Ma the mother, Rajani, she would have liked Abai to become a British lawyer to go to London, but the father didn't allow that. He didn't want Abai to be polluted with materialistic British education. So uh, that, um, that prediction, you, you, we know, we know uh, all of us, that prediction came true. And Prabhupada did even much, much further uh, devotional activities. Uh, he did a miracle. The whole world now uh, knows about Krishna consciousness. Uh, we, we say that Hare Krishna Ma Mantra becomes a household um, word, actually. Everybody knows. And uh, 
I travel often to Russia, and I can tell you that 300 kilometers uh, above the polar circle in a country called Murmansk, we have devotees. Uh, they, are, they are like jewels. Uh, it's not much in that city. Uh, it's, uh, it's snowing, it's ice most of the time. In June, you find ice. Uh, not, not many fruits, everything is imported, but there is a temple of Krishna. You know, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is sung there. So the pre prediction reminded me of, um, of something that happened when Srila Prabhupada came to New York. Uh, you, you have seen uh, in the movie of Yadubara and Vishaka, um, that Prabhupada was dressed uh, like uh, an Indian sadhu. He had uh, white uh, plastic uh, rubber shoes and uh, he had maybe two chada. It was very cold. And he was sitting on a bench near uh, Madison Square. And he saw that all the buildings were whitish. Sheila Prabhupada thought somebody, some people have painted the building, but it was the first time Sheila Prabhupada saw snow, snow, you know. Then he was sitting on the bench, it was cold, uh, he had uh, practically no money. He was just going to the uh, bookshops, trying to, to sell the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam he had taken on the Jaladutta. <clears throat> but it was very difficult because he couldn't understand the American accent of the book uh, keepers and they couldn't understand his Indian Victorian uh, accent. So sometimes he was actually starving, he, he couldn't sleep, he had pain in the stomach. But uh, he was carrying on like that, you know, completely alone at the time. And one uh, American gentleman sat near him and asked him, why have you come here? What is your purpose? And Srila Prabhupada told him, actually, uh, I have many, many followers. I have great opulences. And I have 108 temples. But time is separating. So Prabhupada knew. So uh, we, I'm, I'm going now to, to go uh, to describe some uh, pastimes, Dila, uh, about Srila Prabhupada's compassion. And uh, I don't know if you read every day Srila Prabhupada Lila Mrita or every week, I don't know. Is it every day? <coughs> Every day? Sunday. Every Sunday. So you are going to go further and further. Uh, we just uh, <coughs> passed Srila Prabhupada's birth, the day uh, after Chanmastemi, and you are going to see him developing his uh, unique uh, Vaishnav qualities as a child, and even uh, doing many devotional activities. And Shia Prabhupada told us later, actually what I'm doing uh, now all over the world, I did as a child. Just book uh, publishing, book translating, writing, publishing, distribution, I didn't do. But all the rest I did, you know, worshipping the deities, doing a Ratha Yatra in the street of Calcutta. Shira Prabhupada did as a child, chanting bhajan, learning harmonium. So uh, let's talk uh, about Shira Prabhupada, a compassion. Maybe you already know the story, but uh, they are, they are, some of them are uh, some of my favorite. Who knows uh, the story? To, to show Prabhupada kindness, compassion, how he will never forget anybody, a friend, or how he will never forget even one student, one disciple, even if the disciple fell down, didn't succeed. 
uh, how his mercy uh, was limitless. Same as uh, his divine grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So, uh, and how he will also never forget any one of you. He will never forget any devotional service you are doing. Because Srila Prabhupada didn't come only for his direct disciples. He came for all uh, the, uh, the new generation and, and all generations to come. And he's witnessing all our, your devotional service. And uh, he loves every one of you very, very much. He's not far away from you. He's like the universal Siksha Guru for, for many, many generations to come. So who knows the story of Mr. Mangulam? Somebody know Mr. Mangulam? No? Okay. So uh, the story starts in Bangalore. Uh, they, uh, it, was, um, it was after uh, Prabhupada left the world. Uh, there is one devotee, American devotee, whose duty was to go out and to do what we called life membership. Everybody knows about life membership? Yeah? Everybody knows. Uh, it, it is still going on? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So, life membership, you approach devotees, uh, it was the instruction of Prab Prabhupada, you approach wealthy, uh, aristocratic people, and uh, you ask them to become uh, a life member of his school, a member for life. And they can stay three days in each uh, temple of his school, normally, <laughs> and uh, they can get books. Uh, so that Prabhu, he didn't like doing that job. He was, uh, that seva, no job. He was not very successful. But he had to do it. So he said, who am I going to phone? He took the phone book and he said, oh, I should get maybe somebody from Bengal. Then they will become life member because they should be very proud of Prabhupada. Maybe it will be easy to make them life members. So he, he looked at the phone book and he found a Bengali name, Mr. Mangulam. So he said, I'm going to call Mr. Mangulam. <laughs> so he called, hello, Mr. Mangulam. I'm from Iskone. I, will, I want to present you the life membership program. Can I come and see you? Yes, you can come tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. So the Prabhu goes and uh, he comes at the address and he cannot believe it. It's a very luxurious, expensive, modern building like you can see in Bangalore. And he, he thinks nobody's going to accept to become life member here. You know, it, such a modern company. And so he goes to the reception and the lady uh, uh, says, okay, you want to see Mr. Mangulam? She phones and he's taken to the first floor. Uh, then same thing happened again. Uh, somebody uh, very well dressed, you know, comes and says, yes, I'm taking care of you. He's taken to the second floor. And it goes on, it goes on up to the 10th floor. It's a very huge building. And he starts feeling a little nervous, you know. He looks, he's not, he's not very uh, clean, not very well ironed and everybody is dressed so posh. And all of a sudden he realized that Mr. Mangulam is the big, big boss of that company. So uh, they, uh, the secretary knocks on one door and take, takes him in. And here there is um, a, a council of the boards, uh, of, the, of the board of directors of the company. And Mr. Mangulam is sitting and seeing the devotee, he says, okay, the meeting is finished now, you all go out. I have to meet that Hare Krishna devotee. So the, the devotee is feeling a little nervous. 
And uh, Mr. Mangulam says, so what can I do for you? Uh, so he doesn't know how to present really well. He is just pulling a, a little uh, book and he says, well, Mr. Mangulam, you're from Bengal. Uh, our spiritual master is also Bengali. The founder, Charya Viscon, you should be very proud because you're a Bengali. Uh, so you have to become a life member. So Mr. Mangulam smiles and he said, um, and how much does it cost to become a life member? So it's a long time ago, so maybe now it's not so much, but at the time it was a lot. It was 2,222 rupees. It's not much now, no? No? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it, it was a lot, you know? And uh, Mr. Mangulam takes uh, his, his checkbook, he writes, and he gives the check. And the devotee looks 10,000 rupees. So he says, oh, thank you, thank you so much. And Mr. Mangulam tells him, actually, I was not very impressed by your speech. <laughs> and the devotee says, me neither. <laughs> but he said, I called you because I want to tell you a story. When my father, who, who now is departed, was a young child, he had a very good friend, and they were going together uh, to school on bicycle. And actually, his very good friend was your spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And when they became a little older, um, they started to play chess. It was, they were doing chess contest. And um, there was, um, they didn't uh, play for, they didn't contest for money, but um, the winner was invited at the other child's home to have lunch. And uh, guess who was always winning? Hmm? Yeah, Shira Prabhupada, even small, was always winning. So he came a lot to the house. Then they started to grow up and to go to university. And Mr. Mangulam uh, was actually uh, uh, learning Sanskrit. And he became a very, very famous Sanskrit teacher. Uh, he got his PhD in Sanskrit. And Abai Prabhupada told him, later on, when I will be doing things, you can come to help me. So Mr. Mangulam asked, what kind of things? Prabhupada didn't answer. Uh, so um, then they didn't see each other for a very, very long time. And they became old. Prabhupada became old. Mr. Mangulam, father, became old. And um, the, the boss of the big company was a student in Calcutta. One day, so a big poster, I see Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada is coming to our temple in Albert Road and uh, is going to give lectures. So he, he had heard all his life about Prabhupada because uh, Mangulam father was very proud. He was telling his students and his family, he was saying, uh, I know uh, the founder Acharya Viscon is a holy man. Uh, he was my friend from, uh, from, from school, from the kindergarten practically. So uh, the young uh, student went to hear Srila Prabhupada and it was a beautiful lecture. But Prabhupada, looking at him, recognized him because he looked like his father when he was young. So, he, after, after the class, he came to him and he, he asked, where is your father? So young Mangulam said, oh, he didn't come. Please, please tell him to come. I want to see him. So the, the son went to talk to the father and he said, you know, I want to listen to uh, Prabhupada. 
in, a, in the temple in Calcutta, and he wants to see you. Uh, all the Mangulam said, oh no, I cannot go. I'm too shame. I'm a Griya Medi. You know, all my life, I just wanted to, uh, to be famous, to accumu accumulate wealth and uh, be famous. I cannot see uh, Prabhupada, he's a holy man. Uh, so uh, his son said, but he's going to ask for you, what should I say? Mm, you can say, I am sick. <laughs> so he went again to listen to Srila Prabhupada. And yes, Srila Prabhupada asked, <coughs> where is your father? Oh, my father um, is sick. <laughs> uh, and then next morning, you know, Srila Prabhupada used to go to morning walks. He didn't go the usual way. He remembered the house of uh, the, the Mangulam family. So with all the devotees, they came and they knocked on the door. <laughs> and the servant uh, uh, went to tell his master, the spiritual master of the Hare Krishna movement is there with all his disciples, what shall we do? And all the neighbors were looking. It was quite a posh area. So uh, the, Mr. Mangulam says, you let him in. So Prabhupada came with two disciples. And um, before that, uh, me, uh, the father, Mr. Mangulam, remembered he was supposed to be sick. So he went in the bed. <laughs> he went in the bed. And Prabhupada came, and Prabhupada started to talk with him in Bengali. And um, the old friendship came again like when they were students or kids, you know, they were joking together. And um, Mr. Mangulam told him, I'm so ashamed in front of you. You are such a pure devotee, holy man. I'm just a Griya Medi, you know. And Prabhupada said, do not worry. It's never too late. I will take you with me. It's not too late. I will take you with me. And all the Mangula be became so happy. He thought, Srila Prabhupada is taking me with him. He's taking me, maybe he will take me to America, to London, and I can do a, a devotional service for Krishna. He said, it's not too late. And he was just in pure ecstasy. Then Srila Prabhupada left, uh, and uh, the sun came back in the evening, so father told him, Prabhupada came and he's going to take me with him. And he was, he was so happy, he was chanting Hare Krishna. And uh, he was the happiest man in the world. But then, in a matter of minutes, he just, he just left his body, chanting Hare Krishna and thinking, Srila Prabhupada is going to take me. So now we go back in Bangalore when uh, the young student has become the big boss of that big aeronautic company. And he said, in the beginning, we, talk, we thought Srila Prabhupada is going to take him to, to London, to New York. But now I understood that Srila Prabhupada meant I'm, I'm going to take you with me back home, back to Godhead. So Prabhupada never forgot his old friend. When he saw him, although he didn't practice so much spiritual life, he came to give his mercy to him, to take him home, back to Godhead. And uh, the big boss said to the devotees, by the way, I'm already a life member. <laughs> You know, he was already a life member. And then he started to come to the temple and to, um, to, to help the devotees to do devotional service in Bangalore. So that was uh, the story of Mr. Mangulam. And uh, I think it's a very moving story. How Srila Prabhupada never forget, forgets any uh, little uh, friendship, any little uh, devotional service. So we, we can be sure he will not forget us.
So, dear, dear devotees, uh, I still have uh, two, two, two stories, but it's seven o'clock, so you tell me what I should do, if we should carry on or if we should stop. You, I'm your servant, so you tell me. Huh? One more, is it okay? But if you have to go, you can go. Huh? You can go if you have to go. Maybe you know that story, it's a famous story. It shows also the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. It's a story told by a wonderful uh, devotee from India. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe his name is Haridas uh, Prabhu. Uh, you know him, maybe. So you will probably know the story, but it's so beautiful. So he's telling the story how life, uh, uh, his destiny from the very beginning was not an easy one. Actually, his, ma his mother just um, put him in the street when he was a baby. And uh, like many, many children in India, he just grew up as he could. You know, mainly by, uh, by stealing, stealing with uh, his little uh, hands, very, uh, very swift. He could steal people and uh, survive. And he became uh, a big, uh, I mean, an adult and a, 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 a better thief. <laughs> he would steal uh, the tourists and, uh, and one day he met one devotee. And the devotee gave him a magazine uh, back to Godhead. That young man was not interested in spiritual life. But um, he looked at the magazine and he saw the beautiful picture of Srila Prabhupada. What attracted him in that picture? Was it Srila Prabhupada's beautiful smile? Yes, yeah. It was not Srila Prabhupada's beautiful smile. It was what Prabhupada had around his wrist, a beautiful, very expensive watch. Because uh, devotees would give Prabhupada gifts when he came to the temple. And Prabhupada was very, very uh, uh, cautious of not wasting time. So watch was um, a favored gift to give to Srila Prabhupada. If the devotees were very poor, they would give plastic watch. But when a devotee was very wealthy, it was a very, very uh, expensive uh, uh, first class watch, maybe gold. So that man became obsessed with, with that watch. And he couldn't think of anything else, what to do to steal it. He thought, I'm going to pretend uh, I want to be a devotee. <coughs> so he joined an Iskon temple. He joined an Iskon temple. And he was really a good bhakta. He was washing the pots, cleaning the floor, doing everything. <coughs> and uh, the temple authority were very happy about him. But Prabhupada was not coming to the temple. But he was still, still carry on because he was so obsessed with that watch. And one day the great news came. Srila Prabhupada is coming to the temple. So uh, the temple president, being very happy with the devotee, arranged that he should meet Srila Prabhupada. He came into Srila Prabhupada's room, he offered uh, his pranam dandabat, and Prabhupada told him to come closer. As usual, Srila Prabhupada was sitting on the floor behind a low desk table. And uh, Srila Prabhupada's elbow was like that on the table. And uh, of course, Srila Prabhupada had the watch. <laughs> so, Haridas was, uh, he was not Haridas yet, but he was looking at the watch. And Prabhupada didn't talk to him, just looking at him very, very deeply. And when Srila Prabhupada was looking at you, 
uh, it was so much compassion, and it was also like a scan. You, could, you couldn't hide anything from Srila Prabhupada, you know? And uh, Srila Prabhupada didn't say anything. He looked at the boy, and very slowly he took his watch out, and he gave him the watch. And from that time, that boy became a true devotee. You know, he, he was overwhelmed um, with um, transcendental happiness. He was overwhelmed by the loving care of Srila Prabhupada. But Prabhupada did something more to him. Remember, that boy was, did not know his parents. So he became a good devotee, uh, he became Haridas Prabhu, and he had to do some service, he had to take a plane, and he, he had to fly, and he needed a passport. So he started filling the document, but then uh, he couldn't do, uh, he, was, he was stopped. So he went to Srila Prabhupada saying, I cannot get my passport, Srila Prabhupada, I cannot fill the document. And Srila Prabhupada says, show me the document. <coughs> show me the document. So he showed him what he couldn't feel. It was written, name of the father. So Prabhupada says, give me the document. He took a pen and name of the father, he wrote, I Bhaktivedanta Swami. So not only did he give the boy uh, his, uh, his, uh, fulfill his material wish, that beautiful watch, but after that, he also gave him uh, what he never had in his life, the best father in the world. So the, the sto beautiful story of Haridas. So dear, dear uh, pra Prabhus and Matachis, I don't want to take more of your time, but if you have any questions, or if you like to share something, you are most welcome. It's, it's okay. <coughs> I just wanted to thank you because it was very really beautiful. I got so engrossed. I didn't know how to thank you. So definitely it was so beautiful. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I want to, to thank you all to have come and allow me to, in that beautiful uh, spiritual place, to, um, to talk about Srila Prabhupada. But the one we really uh, have to thank is Srila Prabhupada, <laughs> you know, because his mercy is absolutely limitless. And he did what nobody else could, could do. Uh, <coughs> he was actually chosen by Lord Chaitanya. Of course, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, they prepared everything for his going to manifest and all of our Acharya. But it's Prabhupada who got uh, to do it. And so we, we have to thank him so much. <laughs> we can never repay him. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know if you could talk about your pastime with the Russian incident with Anatoly, and I think Prabhupada was okay for someone to go and <coughs> help him. Anything you want to talk to him to go as a. I don't know if he was supposed to go, but he was, wanted someone to go as his wife or something? Yes. <coughs> yes, <coughs> but um, sorry, <coughs> it will uh, it will take a long time. Maybe maybe another time if you want, uh, we can ask the because that will take the full hour. 
<laughs> but uh, <clears throat> yes, Prabhupada was so merciful that he gave me that uh, extra uh, wonderful seva to, to try to serve the Russian uh, devotees. But uh, that will take a long, long time. So if there is time, I'll be very happy to, to share this with you. If we, because now time is flying away. See, it's a, it's a long topic. Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay. okay, Prabhuji. Um, yeah, it's so, it will take us so very long time, but I can pick one. Uh, 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 you know, by, uh, by the mercy of the Lord, when, uh, when Krishna within sees that we are really searching for spiritual life, He's making all the arrangement. So <coughs> I was with two uh, friends from from uh, uh, school, and um, we we met uh, devotees in Paris. You have heard my French accent. <laughs> so it was in Paris that we met uh, the devotees. Um, devotees were just coming from America. They had no money. They were sleeping under the bridges of uh, the river called uh, the La Seine. And uh, <coughs> we, met, we met them somehow or other when time was ripe. Uh, <coughs> so to make things short, after some time they told us Srila Prabhupada is actually opening a temple in London. Why don't you go and meet him? Because we were, uh, we were actually looking for a spiritual master. But we were very polluted by Mayavad philosophy. So we thought, OK, let's go and meet Esi uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada to see if he's a real spiritual master, because we don't want to cheat. <laughs> we were so foolish. And uh, I can tell you um, the first time I saw Srila Prabhupada, we came to the temple, we were uh, with one of my friends. We were two 19-year-old uh, girls. And uh, at that time, the time, all the devotees dressed in uh, sari and dhoti. So we were in uh, civil clothes. And uh, the ladies thought we looked like Maya Devi. So they, they put a sari on us, they put our hair properly. And then we came to the temple room. It was actually a very blessed day. It was uh, December 14th, 69. It was the day of the installation of Shri Shri Radha Nanda uh, A wonderful, beautiful day it is. It's maybe Prabhupada's favorite. I don't know. <laughs> About this day it is, Srila Prabhupada said, um, Krishna has cheated you. He didn't come as a murti. He came himself. So uh, we came in that temple. The installation had been done. It's another beautiful story. And uh, <clears throat> there was a divine kirtan. Yamuna Devi was singing. Mokunda was on the drum. And it was uh, very, very divine. And all of a sudden, uh, all uh, the devotees fell flat on the floor. So we didn't know why. We never did that before. But as we were polite uh, young girls, we did the same. But Prabhupada said, ladies are very curious. Is it true? Yeah? <laughs> so I, I was very curious. So I, I put my head up a little, and I saw two beautiful a golden uh, lotus feet passing nearby. And I wanted to know more to, to whom they belonged. And I saw Srila Prabhupada for the first time. Uh, he was actually entering through uh, the door of the temple. Uh, the altar was uh, in front, and beside was the Vyasasan. So Srila Prabhupada walked towards the Vyasasan. 
And uh, I had an uh, immediate here looking at him. You know, he was very straight, his head up like that. And I thought, oh, he looks so aristocratic. He looks like the emperor of the world. And at the same time, uh, a very uh, antinomic uh, uh, thought came, but he also looks like the most humble sage in the universe. So that was my first uh, meeting with Shiloh Paupad. Then he sat on the Via Sassan, he started uh, leading uh, this beautiful uh, melodic uh, kirtan, very, very uh, slow. Then the tempo picked up, then very meditative again. And he gave a small lecture. And when, he, when uh, uh, our glances um, uh, met, uh, I became overwhelmed. Uh, I did not know why some tears were coming. And I thought, why? I'm not crying out of uh, grief, or I'm not overjoyed. And, uh, you know, with uh, extraordinary happiness, what's happening? And I understood, um, actually, this man, uh, he knows me better than I do. You know, he, he knows everything. He knows uh, all uh, the success, all the failures, and he has so much compassion. He wants to help. He wants to help. And uh, he has the means to help. Uh, during that first 20-minute uh, 20-minute talk, Prabhupada answered a lot of our existential questions, even we didn't have to, to speak them aloud. So that first uh, visit in London, Prabhupada stayed uh, seven days, and after he had to fly, but these seven days were enough to, for Prabhupada to capture us you know, to save us from uh, uh, Mayavad philosophy. You know, he was very kind, very loving, very patient, and uh, he knew exactly what to say at the right moment. So that, that was a, a wonderful um, first uh, meeting with Srila Prabhupada. Like that. Hare Krishna, your devotees, I thank you immensely. And, um, you know, May, may Shila Prabhupada shower on every one of you uh, torrents, torrents of uh, blessing and uh, loving care. And uh, may, may you please him and your dear spiritual masters in this lifetime. Hare Krishna.